Welcome back, everyone. Biden's climate czar, John Kerry, is taking a bit of heat after giving a very bizarre speech at the World Economic Forum in Davos this week. <laughs> when I say bizarre, I mean it. Here's a clip in case you missed it. And when you stop and think about it, it's pretty extraordinary that we, select group of human beings, because of whatever touched us at some point in our lives, are able to sit in a room and come together and uh, actually talk about saving the planet. I mean, it's so almost extraterrestrial to think about, quote, saving the planet. And if you said that to most people, most people, they think you're just a crazy tree-hugging, lefty, liberal, you know, do-gooder, whatever, and, and there's no relationship. But really, that's where we are. Oh, you're very special, John Kerry. You're so special. What are you looking for, a pat on the back? Extraterrestrial. I'm not sure what on earth he's talking about. In no way is John Kerry or any of the other elitist hacks in Davos extraterrestrial or special for that matter <laughs> because they're trying to save the planet purportedly. They're not special. They just think that they are, which is why they have the largest carbon footprints fly across the world in their big private jets eating filet mignon, yet they want us to eat crickets and drink roach milk. Gregory Wrightstone joins me right now to react to this executive director of the CO2 Coalition and author of the book Inconvenient Facts, The Science That Al Gore Doesn't Want You to Know. Gregory, thank you so much for joining me. Extraterrestrial, you big bad special John Kerry, what an angel he is, <laughs> Gregory. Yeah, well, you're your missing... Yeah, well, you're missing the, the part in which he spoke the truth. At the very end, he said, most people actually think we're just crazy, tree-hugging, left-leaning, liberal do-gooders. And so I, I think he nailed it with that, don't you? Uh, and that, that was his closing remark. And uh, a lot of what he said, uh, both John Kerry and Al Gore went on these rants at Davos. They're just a gift that keeps on giving. And they're just, they're... They're exposing this agenda of a non-existent climate crisis and advancing. They're, they're, they're banking on the ability to stoke this climate of fear so we can do uh, anti-economic, crippling economic policies like the Green New Deal and carbon taxes. Now, Al Gore had a couple of strange moments as well in Davos. We have a clip of him uh, saying that climate change is what's causing, if you can believe it, xenophobia. Gregory, here's a clip of that for our audience. We're still putting 162 million tons into it every single day, and the accumulated amount is now trapping as much extra heat as would be released by 600,000 Hiroshima-class atomic bombs exploding every single day on the Earth. That's what's boiling the oceans, creating these atmospheric rivers and the rain bombs and sucking the moisture out of the land and creating the droughts and melting the ice and raising the sea level and causing these waves of climate refugees predicted to reach one billion in this century. Look at the xenophobia and political authoritarian trends that have come from just a few million refugees. What about a billion? We would lose our capacity for self-governance on this world. We have to act. So in answer to your question, I would say we have to have a sense of urgency much greater than we have yet had. And we need have had and we need to make some changes. So he actually says two things there. One, he says we're boiling the oceans, but I do believe that would take an average of 212 degrees in the world for, for the oceans to start <laughs> boiling. <laughs> but then he says xenophobia is a big problem because uh, it's hot outside or something. <laughs> your, your thoughts? Well, yeah, he's claiming uh, we're going to be xenophobic because there's going to be a billion climate refugees. Well, let's look back in my book. In 2005, the UN claimed that there would be uh, 20 million climate refugees uh, by the year 2010. Uh, I went back and I looked at the, and he, they listed these most at-risk islands like the Maldives and the Seychelles. I went back and looked at the census data for 2005 to 2010. The, the population of these island paradises had exploded. People were flocking to these at-risk islands instead of fleeing from them. And then in 2015, the UN again claimed uh, 20 million climate refugees. 
And, and if we look at it, one of the biggest claims they like to make of these island nations will be underwater. And for example, uh, the Maldives are only 15 feet above sea level. And they're claiming all oh, they'll be underwater in a few decades or a decade. Well, 20, I'm a geologist, so I look at things in the long perspective. 20,000 years ago, the Maldives were also 15 feet above sea level. And in that last 20,000 years, sea level has risen 400 feet. And they're going to say, oh, well, that next eight inches of sea level rise is what we expect by 2100. They'll go under, that'll put them underwater. That previous 400 feet of sea level rise didn't do it. But this next eight inches, that's going to be dangerous. Uh, everything we, everything he said in that rant, uh, the oceans, are they warming a little bit? The oceans, the average temperature has warmed about eight tenths of a degree since 1900. Uh, that's not too alarming to me. And the warming started more than 300 years ago, long before we started adding uh, prodigious amounts of CO2 to the atmosphere. Uh, and actually, I'm, I'm a, I, if you look, I've got a bumper sticker on the back of my car. It says, I love CO2 and so should you. Uh, we're big proponents of the benefits of more CO2. Yeah, the, in other words, what you're saying, Gregory, is, is this whole thing is a hoax, right? This climate alarmism that's being pushed by the Al Gores uh, of the world, by the John Kerry's of the world, the Paul Ehrlich's of the world, it's all a bunch of bunk. So where, uh, how does Al Gore, how do these people manage to, to keep kicking the can further down the road. They, they, they claim something's going to happen in five years. Five years comes, uh, the, the situation is actually better than what it was five years before that. And then they say, no, it's going to get really bad in 10 years. Then 10 years comes and things are still better, or at least they're all fine. How do they manage to keep being taken seriously? Well, it, it's, there's a pretty easy explanation for that. They control the media and they silence people like me and the members of the CO2 coalition we're a scientific group of more than 100 of the top scientists. Uh, we, we as a group believe that modest warming and more CO2 are leading to just huge benefits to Earth's ecosystems and to the human condition. And we should celebrate that. But we're stifled. We can't get our word out. Um, the, the media outlets have, have flat out stated uh, they will not have anyone that has a contrary opinion. The only opinions most people here on the TV and the radio uh, are are those of of this pushing this man made a uh, catastrophic climate hoax? So, in other words, mainstream news outlets like CNN and, and MSNBC, they're not in the business of following the science, Gregory, like they always say that they are. Like they said they were with COVID nineteen. Like they say they are with climate change. They're in the business of telling you a story that's going to scare you and that's going to get you to give to surrender your money and your freedom, your liberty, your agency to them. Is that is that your experience? Because I, I, I assume CNN isn't reaching out to, to people like you and people in, in your organization uh, wanting you to come on for interviews. They're going for the, for the Al Gores and the Paul Ehrlichs, the people who have gotten it wrong every step of the way. Exactly. And, you know, we're doing something about it here at the CO2 Coalition. We were concerned about the state of education, science education, in particular in America. And we've, uh, we're creating what's called the CO2 Learning Center. Uh, we've got our a new YouTube channel. It's called CO2 Learning Center YouTube, CO2 Learning Center. Go, they've got some fascinating, uh, these are anime style cartoons teaching science about about the atmosphere and gases and, and photosynthesis and things, and just a truly entertaining uh, way. And, we, and we've created lesson plans that go along with that. We'll be rolling that in the next, out in the next month or so. Um, and uh, I'd like love to be back on to, to, to when we get this ready to go and launch. It's probably about uh, early March. Uh, we're just, I'm just so proud of what our group has done uh, in providing science to, to teachers, to educators, to homeschool parents. Um, it's something that's needed and, um, we're just being so effective doing that. Well, I, I, I like to have actual doctors, actual scientists, actual experts on my show here at One America. So we're more than happy to have you on again soon. Gregory Wrightstone, thank you so much. Everyone, CO2coalition.org is his website. You should go check it out. Gregory, we'll have you back on. Thank you so much for being here today. Great. Thank you so much.